Hi everybody, this is Roxy, and I went to the Dollar Tree. Oh my god, it's been so long. I have a bunch of gift cards that I've kind of been hoarding. I think I have like five of them. So I used one today, and I didn't even know how much was in it, on it, but I think it was $20, $20, and then I had to give her another one for six more dollars. So I've got a bunch of stuff. Um, it was kind of fun. I hadn't been there for a month or more. I'm not sure when. Um, okay, so I have a grapevine wreath that it's got spring flowers on it, and I need to kind of gussy it up a little bit. So I thought I'd get some pretty springy. That one's pretty. Some pretty spring flowers just to kind of put here and there. I should have got a couple of these. I wish I had now. But it's already got some flowers. I just need to kind of give them a little pop. So I got that. And then I thought I'd maybe make a bow with this stuff. So when it's done, I'll show you if it turned out. If you don't see it, then it didn't turn out. But it, I'm pretty confident. Well, all right. So then... <clears throat> I was walking, watching Al John. She's got the coolest video. She's like a little scientist, or like a little chemist, and makes everything literally almost from scratch. But she was talking about she's doing a journal on a budget, and she's she pretended that she didn't have any supplies, and went to her thrift store and the Dollar Tree and Walmart, and got as many supplies as she could to start journaling. And one of them was paper tape. And we used to use this long ago and far away when washi tape first kind of... It hadn't even hit the scene yet. I think it was somebody saw it in Japan and all of a sudden it kind of filtrated all over to YouTube land and people were making their own washi. So I thought I would grab some of that because I forgot all about it till she brought it up again. So that might be kind of fun. I'm going to use different, I might use my jelly plate, um, different inks and dyes and paint and whatnot to make some washi tape. So that'll be an upcoming video. Miss Sheila is running out of dog waste bags. Although the park at the end of our block, right up the street, we've kind of turned it into a dog park. But then last year they built this gorgeous, huge playground and all these kids you know families came out of the woodwork I mean it's a really nice playground so anyways they have two there's actually three stations up the street two at the park and one across the street of dog bags but I like to kind of have our own I don't want to spend all the tax dollars on that and then anyways I somebody was helpful and shrunk my favorite cotton sweater and so I've got to stretch it out and I, I found information online where if you soak it in a bath of baby shampoo and then pull it out, rinse it a little bit. I was going to get two tubs but I just got one. I actually wanted this for something else and I've got big tin tubs that I can use or loom tubs I can use for this project but if you soak it in this and then soak it in clear water and then put it out on a towel and stretch it it'll stretch back to what it was fingers crossed it's my all-time favorite sweater I've had it for like at least 12 years I know for sure and it could even be longer because I love it and I'm really bummed the store is no longer in business where I got it and therefore the line, clothesline, not the where you hang the clothes, but the line of clothing is no longer available. So I will either be successful or I'll have to kill somebody. You know who. Okay, now, food-wise, I use these when I'm making like hot dish because you really don't have to have fresh mushrooms for like hot dish or spaghetti sauce I mean it's nice but you know it's I buy a box of the 
fresh mushrooms and I swear I throw three quarters if not more away because usually with the recipe you don't need a whole box you know so I've kind of been I've always used to use these and then I went to fresh and I'm kind of going back to these because a the mushroom's a mushroom is a mushroom and they're a buck and then I can never resist I love peeps I've always loved peeps I've never wavered my love and I bought this for Scrabby. Isn't that cute? A little Woodstock. And I found these. I know they've had them before. But I love this movie. And I love fun band-aids. Because sometimes I just wear them to wear the... To kind of... You know, I don't do my nails. Because I swear they get worse when I... Like they break and peel and turn into paper. So I just do that sometimes. Um, these are really good to have when you have a snorer next to you. So I had needed some more of those. They're like the circus peanuts where they squish up. Just like a circus peanut. I need another one of these. It's still a little black, but it's not as bad and as noticeable for my um, winter crafts next year. Those are pot holders I found at Hobby Lobby. All right. Then for planner supplies. Oh, cute. I know I could have made them myself, but I didn't. I got these trombones. Isn't that funny how they call them trombones? So I got those. Found a couple of cookbooks. I love ramen. Ew, that's candy. No pictures, but that's okay. And this one is breakfast anytime. Breakfast is my favorite meal. Um, for birthdays, our mom would make um, our favorite meal. Guess what mine was? Pancakes. My sister's was... One was spaghetti, one was steak. Yeah, she was spoiled. And then I can't remember what my third sister was. I don't know what my brother's was. And mine was pancakes. I should have gone with the steak. But I didn't. I love pancakes. Now, they had tons of movies. A lot of Christmas cartoony ones. Oops, but I found some good ones. At least I think they're good. Um, ten movies. Westerns. Ten movie westerns. So you got your ranger in... Oh, the ranger, the cook, and the hole in the sky. That's from 1995. That can't be. Uh, Prairie Fever with Kevin Sorbo. Treasure State. A large reward for a billionaire's missing plane cargo sends two rival boys into Montana wilderness. Like, oh, that's Jerry O'Connell. A rookie forester, Jerry O'Connell. Isn't that that one young guy that's kind of cute? What was he in? Was he in that, um, Al Pacino was blind? I think he was in that one. Learns life lessons under the watchful eye of his superior, Sam Elliott, in this captivating Norman McLean tale. Rugged gold follows Martha Martin's Jill Eikenberry, courageous perseverance in the Alaskan wilderness. The outlaw. Seeking refuge from refuge from the law at Friend Doc Holiday's Ranch. I love, I love that whole Doc Holiday and Billy the Kid wears out his welcome when he falls in love with Doc's girl, Jane Russell. That is going to be good. Once upon a Texas train, a former Texas Ranger is forced out of retirement when a criminal from his past, Willie Nelson, he's not mean, evens the score. Blue Steel, U.S. Marshal John Carruthers. John Wayne is on the hunt for the polka dot. Oh, God. The polka dot bandit. Didn't they even have polka dots back then? Who was made off with a load of payroll money. I don't think they had polka dots way back in the West. Pioneer Woman. Ooh, is it Reed Drummond? No. When a household... No, when a homesteader's husband, William Shatner dies, she is forced to decide, well, this is weird. 
whether she and her children can survive in the wilds of Wyoming. Co-starring Helen Hunt. That's weird. I've never heard of it. The Lucky Texan, just out of college, John, or Jerry Mason, John Wayne, and family friend Jake Benson hit the jackpot when they discover a secret gold mine. Angel and the Bad Man. Quirt Evans, John Wayne, is a hardened criminal bent on tracking the man responsible for his foster father's murder. Bill hates John Wayne. He and this is Bill, and I think he's right. He says John Wayne and Robert De Niro have one character, and they play it every time. I think he's right. This looks really good. I can't wait. The Elephant by Gus Van Zandt. His stuff is usually good. It's unforgettable. American High School on one single rainy day that very rapidly turns tragic. The story unfolds filled with class work, football gossip, and socializing. It observes the coming and going of its characters from a safe distance, allowing us to see them as they are. With each student, we see high school through a different experience and new lens. These experiences range from friendly and innocent to traumatic and deeply disturbing. Uh, demonstrates that high school life is a complex landscape where the vitality and beauty of lung lives can shift from light to darkness with surreal speed. Maybe now it's an ordinary high school to accept that it's not. I thought high school was so boring and all I wanted was to get out of it. And I did in my senior year. I had, I showed up in the morning at 7 a.m. for acting class. And then I had an art class. And then I had band, and then I had a whole, what do they call them, learning center of acting down um, on Summit Avenue in St. Paul. It was the most fabulous year of my life. I had nothing to do. I mean, I think because we could take all these, um, you know, we could fill up the sophomore and junior with all our classes and then just sail through senior. Um, Scrubby did it a different way. He somehow did the same thing where he got out of school. I think by noon, no, even earlier, I think it was by 11, and then he was on OJT, so he worked down at Bridgman's downtown. That's where we ended up meeting, but he he really worked it. I think his morning was working in the cafeteria with the lunch ladies, passing out breakfast or whatever, and then he went to study hall, and then he was out. So, and we didn't even know each other then. We were just Kind of the same wavelength. All right. He's always good. This looks really good. HBO film. <gasps> Academy Award winner Jim Broadbent. An Academy... Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Broadbent is Frank Angier Pakenham, the seventh Earl of Longford, an unconventional politician who tirelessly champions prisoners' rights. Morton is Myra Hindley, the infamous child killer behind the Moore's murders and the personification of evil among the public, playing out amidst the media fear of the time. The story explores the reasons behind Longford's steadfast conviction that Hindley should be released and rehabilitated, showing how his advocacy and good faith, ironically, may have ransomed his good name and reputation built over the decades. That looks really good. Hero Dogs Collection. Oh, this is so cool. Where the Red Fern Girls grows. Red Fern grows. Danny Boy. Lassie the Painted Hills and Behave Yourself. Shelly Winters is so good. She's always good. Nuttier than a bed bug, but she's good. I can't read anymore because my voice is tired. East Side Sushi. This looks fun. Made me hungry. She's cute. Whoever she is. So that looks good. And this is like awesome. This is when we watched The Office, the British, with Ricky Gervais. We watched that when that was out. Which was when? It says 2001 and 2. Boy, it seems longer ago than that. But So then when The Office came on here with Steve Carell and we watched it, but this is like, he is so hilarious, and he's got that just real passive kind of 
arrogant guy down perfectly. So I'm probably going to watch him again and then give him to my niece because we keep telling her about him. She loves extras that he did. And we're like, no, 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 you got to watch The Office. So anywho, that's my awesome Dollar Tree. And thanks for watching. Let me know. What do you think of these videos? Which one do you think would be the best one to start with? I don't know which one. And any of the questions or comments, leave them down below. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. I love getting to see people back every now and then. And thanks for watching. Bye.